In Hollywood, you're only ever as good as your last film. Even if you've been churning out hits for years on end, all it takes is one awful movie to take you down a peg. Here's a look at some awful films that put an end to an actor's hot streak. Serena When Jennifer Lawrence stumbled up to the podium to collect her Best Actress Oscar for 2012's Silver Linings Playbook, she was already several films into a hot streak. She'd turned in an impressive performance in 2010's Winter's Bone and made her first appearances in the Hunger Games and X-Men franchises after that, which collectively brought in over half a billion dollars. She got her third Oscar nomination for her scene-stealing role in American Hustle in 2013 and continued to make the whole blockbuster thing look easy the following year with Mockingjay Part 1. Like I said, I know exactly what I have to do. Unfortunately, her streak ended in tame fashion in 2014 with the universally panned Serena, which was rejected by audiences, critics, and even film distributors. After a very limited domestic release which netted under $200,000, Serena disappeared. Despite an Academy nod for joy, the final Hunger Games film turned out to be the lowest earning of the lot and Lawrence's poll has wavered ever since. The Great Wall American movie studios have known for a while that China's box office has been growing exponentially, and some have attempted to take advantage of the Chinese market by altering their movies to cater to overseas sensibilities. Others have sought co-productions with Chinese studios, which is how Matt Damon's The Great Wall came to be. Legendary teamed up with the China Film Group for what turned out to be an epic disappointment, grossing $45 million stateside. Director Zhang Yimou brought plenty of his famed visual flair to the movie, but it was critically trashed both in the US and in China. The critical reaction wasn't good for Damon, who had been on a real hot streak with roles in Interstellar and The Martian, as well as a producer credit on Manchester by the Sea. Things haven't exactly been going great for Damon since. He saw out 2017 with Suburbicon and Downsizing, two bizarre comedies that premiered to mixed reviews at best. The Lady Killers Not many actors can claim to have experienced a hot streak as long as the one Tom Hanks enjoyed for the better part of 15 years. From the early 1990s to the midpoint of the 2000s, Hanks was a guaranteed draw at the box office, with his movies rarely pulling in less than $100 million. In that space of time, he starred in such critically acclaimed hits as Philadelphia, Forrest Gump, Apollo 13, Saving Private Ryan, and many, many more. Somebody later told me it gave people hope. Nah. Nah, I don't know anything about that. It had to happen sometime, but when Hanks' bubble did eventually burst, it was unexpected. Nobody saw his hot streak coming to an end with The Lady Killers. The idea of Hanks collaborating with the Coen brothers on this 2004 remake of a British classic seemed like a surefire recipe for success. That wasn't the case, however. The movie barely recouped its $35 million budget at the domestic box office and was panned by many of the industry's top critics. The Monuments Men he hasn't been able to hit that $100 million mark quite as often as Tom Hanks, but George Clooney is also known to bring in the big bucks on occasion. He generated major bank fronting Steven Soderbergh's popular and highly profitable Oceans movies, and his starring role in the critically panned 1997 Batman and Robin still managed to bring in a cool $238 million. In the late 2000s, Clooney was undeniably A-list, but in 2014 his career took a severe nosedive. Clooney co-wrote, produced, directed, and starred in World War II caper The Monuments Men, a story about a ragtag platoon sent into Nazi Germany to retrieve stolen works of art. Despite an all-star cast that included Matt Damon, Bill Murray, and John Goodman, the movie bombed in theaters and took a licking from the critics. Worse, because Clooney was so involved in the movie's production, there were few other people to blame besides the former Batman. Free State of Jones Matthew McConaughey's career is a tale told in two acts. After years of depending on his looks and charm to pay the bills with rom-com after forgettable rom-com, he decided to start acting again, and Hollywood welcomed him back with open arms. Dubbed the McConaughey's at the time, McConaughey's turnaround can be traced back to 2011's The Lincoln Lawyer, which scored highly with critics. Between his 2014 Best Actor win for Dallas Buyers Club and his scene-stealing performances in The Wolf of Wall Street and Interstellar, McConaughey seemed unstoppable. Unfortunately, you can't keep making good choices forever, and McConaughey's 2016 Free State of Jones was definitely not a good one. The Civil War drama only managed to claw back half of its $50 million budget, and the majority of critics were unimpressed. Worse, his starring turn in 2017's The Dark Tower was similarly disliked, spelling the end of McConaughey's box office domination. No matter who crosses the finish line first, the universe will die out eventually. Death always wins. King Arthur, Legend of the Sword 
In 2002, Charlie Hunnam starred as Nicholas Nickleby in a critically acclaimed adaptation of the classic Dickens novel, and then showed his darker side in 2005's Green Street Hooligans. Later appearances in Children of Men, Sons of Anarchy, and Pacific Rim built Hunnam into a star to watch. Hunnam followed up the Guillermo del Toro blockbuster with another del Toro movie, Crimson Peak, and later the critically lauded Lost City of Z. Unfortunately, his luck was about to run out. With Hunnam as the face and director Guy Ritchie at the helm, King Arthur Legend of the Sword was supposed to be the start of a new franchise based on the legendary character. Those plans were hastily scrapped after the box office numbers spelled disaster. Warner Brothers signed off on a $175 million budget, but the film made less than $40 million domestically. It looks like in this case, Hunnam wasn't quite worthy to take the sword from the stone. Anyone can pull it once it's been pulled. You Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel, plus check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.